Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. This is our last session that we'll be having on AI and uh, machine learning. And I hope for the last five weeks you had fun learning. And uh, this being our last lesson, probably the first thing I'll ask is what was your favorite session? Or is this your favorite session? I am not sure. So you can just drop on the chat which session was your favorite and what or what was the favorite thing or the most interesting thing that you learned throughout this period. But then today's session will be on knowledge mining. We'll be learning about Azure Cognitive Search. And if you've not been part of any of this session, you can still catch up. We have a Cloud Skills Challenge going on and it's ending by next Friday. So you're like almost a week away from the end of the session. So you can join the skills challenge at aka.ml slash AI challenge. And you'll be able to catch up with what has been going during this period. And yeah, that will, that, that will be a fun thing to do. As I mentioned, everyone who gets to complete the challenge will earn a badge. And I'll also show you at the end of the session, I'll be dropping a link where you can get cert your certification voucher. If you're a student and you want to get certified, I'll share a link with a blog post on how you the steps you can follow to get certified. Of course, after the whole sessions, we'll be sharing with you all the links that you need, all the, the forms that you need to fill to get access to all the different resources, all the different badges. So be sure to look out on that on your emails. Otherwise, I'll head over to today's session. Um, as always, I'm Bethany Jepchumba. I'm a cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And the person who's doing today's session is one of my colleagues. He's called Jafret Namu. He's from Nigeria, also a cloud advocate. We work in the same team, and I hope you'll learn a lot from him. So over to you, Jafret. Yeah, you're good. We can hear you. Glad to be here with you. Uh, it's a pleasure to see all the amazing things you all have been in the past few weeks as part of Game of the students. Your commitment for the past five weeks has been quite. Just as Bethany mentioned, I'm Jafflet Wang and I am a cloud advocate at Microsoft in the same team as Bethany. I guess focus on Microsoft 365, Microsoft Power Platform, which is Microsoft's local local development and artificial intelligence. And in this session, we'll be talking about a key part of Microsoft's artificial intelligence service, knowledge mining. But first, I'd like you to think of this. Have you ever been in this situation where you have probably an assignment, a project, or something else to do, and then you need to get results from those. You have to go through lots of pages, lots of books, as this person in the screen currently does. Um, and it's definitely not a nice experience. For you, Bethany, how was it like back in school when you had to do all of these things? It was, of course, frustrating because you can't keep all the knowledge in your head. So you, you actually have to search through random books to figure out what exactly you're looking for. So it was very frustrating. Definitely. You know, that moment where you actually saw one of the answers in one of the books, but then you couldn't find the book anymore on the specific page where that answer was. You have to scroll through all the different pages to find that specific answer. Well, Thanks to search engines such as Microsoft Bing and Google Search Engine and tons of others that makes it easy for us to find information on the internet. But aside those um, amazing Zaflet, can I interrupt you for a few seconds? So yeah, your sure. audio, the quality of your audio is a bit low. Is there any way you can increase your volume and audio quality? Great. Thanks for mentioning that. Uh, 
Yeah, 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 it's no better. So thanks to all of these amazing um, engines that have made it easy, super easy for us to find information whenever we need to. In this session, we're going to talk about a few things uh, which I am going to walk you through. First of all, we learn about knowledge mining, and then we learn about what Microsoft Azure Productive Search is, how Microsoft Azure Productive Search works, and then we we'll dive in proper into our game. So think of knowledge mining as a part of artificial intelligence, which makes it really, really easy for us to find information. Now, think of information as being anywhere. Or it's in um, within an organization, for example, it's to be stored somewhere. For those of you who are not aware, Microsoft Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing platform. It enables us to utilize the power of the cloud to build our solutions, whether it's related to artificial intelligence, whether it's related to local load, it enables us to build all of these in the cloud. Um, without having to bother, yes, without having to the bother much about losing your files, which is the most important part, and also having access to all of these files um, whenever you need to. Now, in this session, I'm going to just we're going to dive into the demo, and while talking about the demo, I will talk about these different parts which I had mentioned earlier, working through Microsoft Azure Community Service, um, and also the search. So I'm going to share my screen and then during the course of this session, we'll get to talk about all of these different parts that um, I need to share. So I'm sure that throughout the entire period of this program, we have worked a lot with Microsoft Azure. And so it's definitely super easy for you to access the Microsoft Azure portal. I am going to head over at this point to portal.azure.com. Which is going to take us to Azure Portal. You can do lots of things here uh, from taking care of uploading all of your environment, all of the resources you need, you can utilize them here, you do your virtual, you create your virtual machines, which is like um, having a computer and cloud, and lots of other cool and amazing stuff. So, first thing I will do is talk about. Azure Community Search. And for Azure Community Search, it utilizes the power of this cloud service to enable us get data, get whatever information we have stored at any point in time from um, wherever it, it, is, it is stored. So to have, for example, different documents, and in these documents, to have information in those documents, it's easy for us with Microsoft Azure Community Service, which is built on Microsoft Azure, to utilize this. Get information from all of those resources, filter it, and get all the information that we need at any point in time. But one big question on your mind, I mean, what is Azure, or what is community, what are cognitive services? Our community services are basically um, it's a part of artificial intelligence, which Microsoft has built in to Azure to enable us um, utilize the power of you know, 
Fission, two things related to fission, two things related to language, two things related to speech. For example, a special text recognition or a language translation, or it may be a computer vision you can utilize them or Microsoft Azure Productive Service. They are divided into four major categories: vision, the language, um, the speech, and then the search, which are what we talk about today. With all of these, it's easy for you to source things out without having to spend so much time pulling up, writing code, pulling up um, your data, and going through all of the, the parts you have to go through during the normal programming. We're going to be this transition. Now, in this session, I'm also going to show you the steps we are going to take to bring this solution to life. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to um, so can you let's screen for this. Okay. This walks through this by all these steps are going to be taken while building our entire solution. First thing we would need to do is to create our Azure Community Service Resource. So once we have created our Azure Community Service Resource on Microsoft Cloud, on Microsoft Cloud Computing Platform, which is Microsoft Azure, it's then easy for us to do that. So first thing we're going to create our Azure Community Service Resource. And then we're going to utilize the cognitive search resource, which is built on cognitive services. We need somewhere to store all of these data that we have collected. And so we're going to create a storage account. And then the next thing we're going to do is upload all of the information that we have in form of documents. We're going to execute them into Azure storage. And then query this index to see how it works. In this case, remember, it's, it makes it easy for us to get information. This time, in a professional setting, an organization setting, it's easy for us to get information um, without having to run through all of the methods of you know, going from one source to another, having from one sheet to another to get all of this information. So I'm going to go back. And then we'll go back here. And first thing that I mentioned we are going to do is to create um, an Azure Community Search. So creating this resource gives us the opportunity to utilize Azure Community Search. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill in all of the next details. I will need your subscription. Um, and I need to create a new resource. So, I'm going to include a service name. It's going to be a unique name. And I need to name it. For the location, I'm going to use the West Twins. I'm going to change the pricing here to free. So for um, if you don't think there are questions relating to this in the chat, please be sure to ask them and I'll be sure to 
lateral response is going to take place in time. So we are waiting for things to boot, and you can see um, in front here, or like showing us that validation has been successful. We're going to print, we're going to print on print. Now we're going to wait for this to And once we have done that, remember the steps we talked about earlier. First, we said we're going to create an Azure Community Service Resource, which we have just created. Now, next, we're going to create an Azure Community Service Resource. Don't forget what we talked about uh, when I explained when talking about Azure Community Service Resource. I said for Azure Community Service Resource, in uh, utilize Vision APIs, it's very good for parts, Vision APIs, language APIs, search APIs, speech APIs. We do a lot of things related to artificial intelligence using this four different tools that are part of Azure community. So I'll head over to create a resource. And this time it's going to be I would utilize the same resource that I have created earlier. Also, use the same region. This time, I'm going to use the same name. But for the pricing here, I'm going to pick standard S, which is the only pricing here. And I'm going to We are going to utilize this search solution to enrich all of the data we will be getting that we store at our data source. So we're going to wait for it. Don't forget, at this point, we have created two important resources. First, we have created the Azure Community Search Resource. Next, we have created the Cognitive Services Resource, which enables us to utilize the power of Microsoft's uh, Azure Cognitive Service. Next, we need to create a storage account. So, we're going to point back Um, yeah, we can. It's a bit choppy, but we can still hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I don't think I can hear you anymore. Is it much better now? Yeah, no, it's better. Okay, great. Um, so I'll just get over. So at this point, to create a storage account name, uh, we're still going to use the name we created earlier. Um, this time, let's see, you can find West US. C 
yes. West US is down here. So next thing we're going to do after this is to check that our performance is a standard um, redundancy. We're going to select locally redundant storage. And then we're going to review and create uh, so just to confirm okay so we're running final validation it's can see up here and then we'll be able to click on create <clears throat> So we'll just give it some time for that to um, validate, for it to pass the validation and then we can get started. So it takes some little time, so just great. So as you can see, validation has been parsed. We click on create. And wait for it to deploy. So while we're waiting for it to deploy, are there any questions currently in the chat? Probably you could um, pop them up and I get to respond to them. Yeah, I think the only question was um, the Azure subscription, if uh, you can be able to share how they can be able to get Azure subscriptions. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, just to respond to that, I don't know if participants received free Azure vouchers. Sorry, um, Azure verification codes. No, 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 they're using Azure for students. Oh, okay, beautiful. Yeah. Um, so for the person that asked, I think the um, Azure for students, if you are a student, would be a great one for you. But just in case you are not student, you can head over to Azure. I'll just put it in the chat where you can get free Azure credit. Um, you can get a free Azure credit to utilize. And that link should pop up anytime soon. <laughs> Okay, great. So uh, let me just paste that in. Yeah, so please, uh, we can share that link with everyone who doesn't have access to the verification code so they can it's their account. So as we can see, uh, any other questions just before I go for them? Uh, there's no other question, so just that. Okay, great, thank you. So as we can see, the resource group has successfully been deployed and created. Now, for the specific example we are using, this organization has a coffee store. And for their coffee store, they would love to get insights from all of the reviews that have been dropped by the customers. Again, this demo is part of the Azure AI Fundamentals learning path, which I'm sure would have been shared with you. Uh, but if it hasn't been shared with you, I would get the link before the end of the session and share with you all. You can download the resources from there. I already have these. 
So I will just upload them. Um, I'll be using this for the Azure Cognitive Search solution. So now that we have created at this point, we have created our Azure Cognitive Search resource. We have also successfully created our Cognitive Service resource and we have created our storage account where we are going to include all of the resources, you know, all of the data that we have or we have um, gotten from, you know, the customer's reviews. Now, we're going to head over to our Azure storage accounts that was created. So I'll just go back. And then I'll be able to see all of these resources. Sorry, just go back here. Great, so I can see it. So I can see all of the resources. So you can see the resource we had created for this here. And then in, under this, just before I head over to the, you can see the search service and the cognitive service resource that we both created. So let's head over back. Let's just go back to, um, open up the account that was created. So let's come over here. Great, so I'll just open this up. <laughs> and you can see this is our storage account. Now, for your storage account, you need to store all of these in data that you have or information as the case may be in a format more of like in a container. So take it as a container where you store things, right? So that's the same thing we're going to be doing here. We're going to load in all of these different reviews that are in form of documents into this container. So I'll head over and click on containers, which you can find on the left-hand side of your screen here. You can see on that data storage containers. So I'm going to click on containers. And the next thing I am going to do is I am going to create a new container for all of these um, reviews that I have collected from users. Or in this case, from customers that are that have come to my coffee shop at any point in time. So I am going to give it a name. And let's name it Coffee Reviews. Right. We want this to be, sorry, containers. Yep. So um, people could have access to it. Great. And then what we need to do is to um, create as you can see, it has successfully been created. So we're going to open up this container and then all of the details that we have, we are going to store it in here. But first, just before, um, okay, so I would upload and then show you what this, the reviews look like. So let, I'll upload all of those reviews come over here upload and then i'll just impute all of them So I'm just going to get them out. And once I have gotten it out, um, I would upload, just pick all of them. Great. And as you can see, I have all of the files there. So I'm just going to, just in case I uploaded multiple um, 
of files, maybe you uploaded one of them twice. Okay, great. So at this point, you can see that all of these have successfully been uploaded. So I'm just going to open up one of them um, on my personal computer. They are in Word formats, just so you know. So I'm just going to open up one of them and then um, I'm going to... Share my screen so that you can see it. So just as a reminder, if you need to download this um, resource, please <clears throat> be sure to head over to the Azure AI Fundamentals specific um, module for this. And I'll, I'll, I'll just share that link. Okay, I think it's best to just share the link so you don't have to go through that stress. You know, finding all those information takes lots of time. So let's, let me just paste that here. Um, and that will be sent over. Great. So that's currently the link. Once you head over to that link, you will be able to access all of the reviews which I have just uploaded here. So what I'm going to do at this point is share my screen again, just to show you what these documents, what these reviews look like. Again, something to note is all of the data we'll be utilizing might be in, you know, it could be in structured format, it could be in unstructured format, whichever format it is, you can utilize it on Microsoft um, with, with the aid of Microsoft Azure Cognitive Vision, you can utilize them there. So I'm just going to find that screen and pull it up. Great. So this is what our data or the reviews look like. Um, and the, the, this specific customer imputed a picture of herself and then also her review. We also have the date and we we'll have location. So these are the parameters that have been imputed. We'll be talking about all of these later on. Um, uh, Jeff, let have you shared your screen. Yes, I have worked, uh, so I just for sure. Can you see it now? Um, yeah, yeah, we can see it now. Okay, great. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can see for this customer, she imputed her photo. I'm just going to increase the size. So she first imputed her photo and added a picture and then she had a review. I love the coffee drinks here, but my favorite part is the local arts they sell. There are many kinds of paintings and all of that. Then you have the dates, the review was imputed, and then the location. Great. So I'll stop sharing and then let's head over to our demo. Just wanted to show you what this data looks like. So whichever format, as a reminder, whichever format you have um, done this, you can, whichever format your data is, you can easily utilize them. So all of these has been successfully uploaded Now, next thing we would need to do is to index all of this data that has been uploaded. So 
So we're going to head over to Azure portal again. We're just going to create a new tab. Uh, this time, let's just open up the home page in a new tab so we don't lose this. <clears throat> Great. We're going to head over now to our resource group. And for our resource group, we're going to find this specific resource group that was created for search. So this is the Azure search resource group. I'm just going to wait for this to load up. And you can find import data. Remember, we have uploaded all of the data into the storage um, resource which we created. We already have an existing resource. And it was stored on Azure Blob, something else to mention. So it was stored on Azure Blob, as you can see here. So I'll just select Azure Blob Storage. And what next I'm going to do is fill in all of this information properly. Some of them have been filled in by default. I'm not going to do anything to all of those that have been filled in by default, um, except they are not so data source name. Just to be specific, let's, okay, so let's keep it um, to your clinics tests. Data to extract, I've extracted the content and the better data. I'm going to leave this as default. Um, and for the connection, I'm going to click on choose an existing connection because we already have our storage accounts created. And as you can see, we already have, we have this uh, storage account which you created. That is the one we'll be selecting. Within that storage account we created, we have a container. And that container is the coffee storage container. Well, we at coffee reviews, sorry, coffee reviews container. So I'm going to select that container. And then you can see that the coffee, uh, container name has already been populated. We're going to leave all of these since they are not compulsory and head over to next. We decide to add a description, but um, since it's optional, we we'll just leave that. It's also optional for you to add a cognitive skills. You could decide you know, to add more functionalities into this, but because of time and for the sake of simplicity, we'll just skip all of this. So just before we go, so let's go back uh, and I'll show you something else. Great, so let's quickly talk about the enrichment. Here you could get to add things like optical character recognition, which is another part of artificial intelligence. And I'm sure um, at some point during the part of this, during this training, you had probably learned about optical character recognition. So I'm not going to talk about it. Um, just wanted to show that to you. And then we're going to enable this. And then next, what's going to happen is I'm going to just go down and see if there's any other thing that we would need to impute. The source data file is mesh content, underscore content. That's correct. Um, enrichment granularity, we're going to increase it to pages just to enable us have more And then we're going to leave out incremental enrichment. Now, this is another key part. So what fields do we need 
first you can see extract people's names you can see extract organization names different things for the sake of this demo the key information we need at the location as we are seeing from the reviews we have the location next thing we also have is I have, are the key phrases within the review that the customer or yeah, the consumer has submitted. And then we also want to detect sentiment. So is the customer happy? Is the customer sad? Um, those are key things. So we're just going to go down. And under image, so if you notice, you're divided into two sections. Um, we have the text cognitive skills, and then we have the image, which enables us to you know, deal with the images that have been uploaded in that data set or in that set of information that we have received at any point in time. So I'm going to use utilize this tool. So for each of the images that have been uploaded, it's going to generate both a tag and also a caption. And next, we're going to click on Save and Enrichment to so Knowledge Store. We're going to select specific things that would be stored. So image projections. Don't worry about this error. Um, we're going to select Documents. And we're going to select Image References, Image Details, which is under uh, Image References. Um, so let's just confirm we have everything. So we've selected the cognitive skills we want to add. We've selected the enrichment we want to add to this. Wait, so let's speak select I've choose an existing connection just to connect to our container once again. So I'm going to select this and you are good to go. Click on next. Yeah, so just before we click on next, notice we didn't take care of the projections so let's document your yeah, important parts the documents have been stored under customer reviews so all of those um, documents we uploaded all of the data we uploaded are were stored under the co coffee co reviews container so we need to impute that and then we are going to click on next great so it takes us here um, and at this point, you can see that all of these details have been created for us. But we're going to change the index name. Sorry. Uh, we're going to change the index name to coffee reviews just so it's identifiable. Or you could decide to use, again, because of the um, scope of the solution we're trying to work on, that's what we need to by utilizing the name coffee reviews but depending on whatever you are trying to build then you can um always switch it now notice some things here some key parts here we need to know which of these information we actually need um and if you notice which of them we want to retrieve which of them we want to filter which of them should be sortable um and searchable so the key parts We would be pick selected are filterable for all of the different types of content because we want to be able to you know filter these responses at any point in time know the um find out those different things that we need right so from images for example once images want to filter all the images want to filter all the text um, that are within the documents that have been submitted so click on next. And we're going to set the schedule to once. I'm going to change the name. So it's identifiable to 
coffee with Pixar, and then we're going to click on submit. So at this point, I'm going to pause a little um, and see if there are currently any questions. Hi, Bethany. Are there any questions? Um, no, there are no new questions. Okay, great. So what is happening right now is we have been able to successfully create our data source. We've added skill sets by clicking submit. We've added skill sets. Um, we've also utilized the index, and then the index are which enables us to which it you know works around in an indexing pipeline that enables us to get all of the necessary information we need from the data. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open this up in a new tab. And I am going to look for indexer. So I'm just going to hide this. Great. Yes, indexer. So you can see the data sources, um, which is the Azure Blob storage, will be created. The accounts are created. You can see here, we, you can see all of the skill sets which we added. We added 10 skill sets, um, and they were stored under Azure Blob skill sets and then you can see the indexes um, based off the coffee reviews the number of documents we uploaded in that storage in that blob storage and then the indexes so i'm going to talk um for the indexes we're going to select the coffee indexer And we are going to notice that we were successfully able to upload this index, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over and just click on it. I'm going to refresh it. Um, okay, great. So we already have success. The last time we ran was about two minutes ago, and it ran for 22.13 seconds. Great. We can always run this um, at any point in time. So all of the things we uploaded has been successful. Now, we have successfully created this. Let's see how it gets to work. Let's say, for example, we want to find out something. How do we search for it? So we're going to go over now. We're going to leave this screen and go over to our search resource that was created. So over here, as you can see, um, I'm going to click on the Search Explorer at the top of this screen. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, sorry, this Search Explorer. Yes, this Search Explorer. And it's going to load. So just going to wait a little bit for it to load. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select under the index coffee reviews, which has automatically been selected because we don't have any other um, that has been stored.
I'm going to go head over and put a string. To be able to search by location. Remember the three key parts which we imputed, which we said we wanted to get from the data. We said we wanted to get um, the location. Sorry, I was going to build this. So it's, not, it's going to, we said we wanted to get the location. That was one key thing we imputed to get from you know all of the things that we submitted. We wanted to detect the sentiment. We wanted to also be able to extract the query phrases and get that. Now, let me explain this line that I just imputed here. So if you notice, it's saying we need to search and we are filtering all of the data under the locations, um, all of the information related to locations, but the specific ones we want is the location that is equal to Chicago. So imagine instead of having to go through tons of um, data, having to go through from each Excel file to the other, it's easy for us to just impute this and we can get all we need to. Um, it, it just brings it out for us. So I'm just going to click on search. And if you notice here, you can see that it has queried all of the data that has been submitted and it has brought out all of those that had the location um, for Chicago. So locations, Chicago, the store in Chicago, you can see the key phrases that have been created as reviews. First, terrible experience. Uh, so that probably from this person that probably that's not a good review definitely um and notice something else you can see from here the sentiment so for each of these reviews for example this one down here you can see the sentiment it's negative the review this user submitted was today i was truly disappointed with how long i had to wait for the pastries I heard that ahead of time, that and that, very terrible experience. That was a key part it got. And then from this next user, we can see that it was a positive one because the user said the coffee tastings every Wednesday afternoon and so forth. Each month, there is a new dream drink team. Um, you do not need to book a spot in advance to attend. So it's easy for us to get all of these without having to go through thorns and thorns and thorns of data to start understanding or to start getting insights from them. Um, so with the, Microsoft Azure, definitely, Microsoft Azure Community Service definitely makes it super, super easy for us to get information as easy as we want to. Um, so I'm going to share my screen at this point. We have successfully seen how we would be able to get all of the information we need whenever we need to. One thing I would like to mention to every single person currently on this session is if you are not utilizing this, you are just testing it out um, just to see how it works, please at the end, don't forget to deactivate all of your resources because they are paid. Microsoft gives you hundred dollar Azure credit for students for free um, every single month and for this specific resource we are currently running I just head over to the settings and I'll show you um, it costs about $74 for this specific resource um, so I'll just come over here and I'm going to show you the subscription where you can get that. So, the cost and management. And then all the cost management. Just moving down. You also find your billings and your Azure subscription. So it gives you this. 
Um, so please don't keep, if you know you are demoing this, if you know you are utilizing this just for search, please don't keep it running. I'm going to show you how to delete it um, once you have completed testing it out. So you don't exhaust the Azure credit sooner than expected. So I'm just going to open this up. And you can just come over here for any of all of the resources, all of the accounts that you have created, you can just delete them. The moment I do, it's going to take down every single thing that I have created. Don't forget, please, to do this if you are um, utilizing this for just the demo or you're just testing this out. Great. Um, so I don't know if there are any questions currently. Um, still no questions. Yeah. So if you okay. have any question, ensure you post them before the session is over. So I'm going to share my screen and then um please let me know when you can see my screen up. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. Um, just please on presenter mode. Can you still see it? So finally, I would like to end this session talking about the Microsoft Lens and Ambassador community, which some of them are working together alongside us cloud advocates to put together to make this happen. It's an amazing community where you get to learn all of these things and utilize all of these technologies. Don't forget to check it out at the end of this session um, if you are a student and you don't get to utilize um, all of it. Studentambassadors.com, this link would be pasted in the chat. And at any point in time, whether you're watching this on demand on um, whatever channel, be sure to ask your questions, reach out to any of us and ask your questions if you have any. I'm sure at this point, we have been able to successfully cover all you expected when it comes to learning, knowledge mining, utilizing Microsoft's Azure Cognitive Service. I'll pass it on to Bethany now. Thank you so much, Jafflet, for the session. It's been truly interesting learning about how you can be able to search through different documents and find out different things depending on what you're looking for. Uh, before we end the session, uh, we have a link. I'll have a link to share with you. So as I promised at the end of the, the whole program, We'll be sharing with you how you can be able to activate you you activate your certification the ai 900 certification so you can head over to ak.ms slash gl hyphen student certification and there you'll find a blog that contains all the resources on how you can be able to get a free microsoft certification as a student as I said, this is our last session today for the Game of Learners um, clinics for AI and ML. But on Friday next week, we'll ha be having an AI gaming hackathon. I'll send the details via emails. And in case you want to participate, in case you've learned something new and we want to test your skills, we'll share the details with you, how you can join the challenge and how you can also win call prizes. So if, for example, you're not a student and you want to win exam vouchers, that will be an opportunity you do not want to miss out on. So thank you so much for spending time today with us. I hope you learned a lot. And yeah, see you in the next program or during the hackathon. Bye, everyone.